Hello Turtles, on today's outside game dev adventure we're going to be taking a kayak float in a lake and talking about when do you know that you're ready to go full-time indie. What are the risks of going full-time indie and how can you mitigate them is basically what this discussion is going to be about. So let's float around this little lake and have a good time. What does it even mean to go full-time indie? And this means a lot of things to different people. There's a lot of big companies nowadays calling themselves indie just because maybe they're publishing their game and to some degree that is what the definition of indie was is self-published games. I kind of always felt indie meant not necessarily solo but very small homebrew teams. What do I mean when I say go full-time indie here? I mean basically supporting yourself making games that you want to make, not making games that other people are paying you for, and releasing them. It does not matter if you're releasing them with a publisher or by yourself. I don't think that, to me, matters for the definition of full-time indie. I think it's about making games for your career that are your own games. Like, you're choosing what to work on from a day-to-day -day basis. I also want to be pretty clear about one thing that might be overlooked, and that's that being a full-time indie developer is not the only way to get into games. In fact, there's a lot easier ways to get into game development as a career. You could work at other companies, big and small. Uh, when you're at a big company, you can really specialize in something, like maybe you're a physics programmer of vehicles, and so that's what you do on the team. Big teams allow you to specialize a lot, and that could be good for your career. You can also do freelancing stuff where you work for hire and choose your projects that you want to deal with. Basically, companies will hire you for a short period of time. They'll, they'll hire you out for whatever you're specializing in. Maybe you're a 3D artist and that's a little bit harder than actually getting a job at a company and staying there fully employed, but it is another option. I think it's kind of the middle ground option between being fully employed and being a full-time indie developer. But for me, indie game development is what I've always wanted to do. I don't know if that's because of my dad, he's self-employed and he gets to choose the jobs he wants to work on. I always wanted to make my own games and make a life from it. So while it doesn't really pay very well, it's the right choice for me. I get to create what I want to create, I get to work on what I want to do on a daily basis. Like right now, we're taking a kayak trip out in the middle of a lake. I don't really care about the low pay. For me, money... Like, it allows me to buy food, pay rent, and all that stuff, and that's kind of a requirement for life, but beyond that, I don't care about money. I don't really care about making $100,000 a year or more. What sort of risks are you actually taking? Obviously, you got the financial risks. You might not be getting paid very much. You might not make any money at all from your games, and that's a very real possibility. I think you can mitigate that a little bit by having a runway that's going to allow you to create more than one game. Look as you have four or five games. Try learning from one and making another one. Tied into financial risk but slightly differently worded is having no audience. You should definitely do your research and do your best to make sure there is going to be an audience for your game. That can be kind of tricky. Uh, just because you identify that there will be an audience doesn't mean they're going to know about your game and buy it. How does yours get popular enough so that other people actually know it exists? That's a big risk. Something that will happen at some point is burnout. There will be periods of time when you're not going to want to work. And it's not even that you don't want to work on it, it's just that you don't, you can't concentrate. It's not really your choice. How are you sure you have all the skills necessary to become an indie game developer? I was talking earlier about working in big companies like AAA, where you get to specialize in one thing really, really deeply. But when you're an indie game developer, you've got to do a lot of things. You're going to have to do a little bit of art, you're going to have to do a little bit of programming, you're going to have to do a little bit of design and marketing, and everything you're going to need to do at least a little bit of. You don't have to be an expert in all of them necessarily, but you need to be able to hire out and, and get help when you need to, right? It can also become an obsession, and it becomes your entire life. And the risk there is you might lose family or friends. So maybe you've decided that you have the skills, or at least most of them. Do you have the self-discipline to work every day on your project? The way I answered this is I did it alongside a full-time job. If I can't stay motivated to work on my own project while holding a full-time job, how am I ever going to stay motivated without that full-time job? Like, you don't need to be working non-stop. Taking a small break like this is actually a good reward. Technically, this is working for me since I'm making this video for you. But you also need to have that self-discipline so that when you 
need to get something done, you do it instead of just procrastinating. I can do it later, I can do it later. A big reason many game jams are 48 hours long is because it doesn't allow you to procrastinate. Like you must jump in and get stuff done because 48 hours is not much time and you already realize that. If you did a game jam that was a month long, a lot of people kind of take it really slow in the first couple of weeks. They just chill out, they procrastinate. And then by the last week, they're kind of like, well, there's no point. Now there's only a week left and everyone's gonna have a good game. And you need the self-discipline to be able to keep working on it even though that deadline is down the road. Like it might not be tomorrow. Okay, turtles, now we can do this while paddling. So that'll be good. I do only have one-sided paddle. I'm borrowing this kayak from family. But that's okay. We have some fun, right? Doesn't matter the equipment's if we got the best equipment or not. We can still have fun. I was talking earlier about the risks involved, or at least a few of them. Your risks might be different. Maybe you have a family you have to take care of. You need to pay attention to your own risks. Understand that it's your game might not sell anything. Are you going to be okay with that? I've got a runway that's gonna be three to four more years. I've already been full-time indie for two years. Uh, my runway is getting a little smaller. I've got plenty of resources to hire out help where I need to. I've got plenty of resources for my cost of living during that period of time. I am not gonna go hungry. I'm not gonna be begging family or friends to make my way by, right? Like, I'm not gonna be like, hey, can I go sleep on your couch this week? Can I borrow some food? That's not something I'm doing. I have runway for that. And I highly recommend you get a runway, even if you've got friends or family that are letting you stay with them rent free. Don't leech off people, right? Like maybe your family is okay with it, give them something for rent. And if you can't, find a job, save up. Get a runway saved up and then go into it. It is hard. If those people weren't helping you, you need to be able to support yourself too. That's a big thing, at least for me. And I'm not, I'm not here to look down upon people that are living rent free. I've been in that situation where I got out of college and I couldn't afford to pay anything. I didn't have any money, I didn't have a job, couldn't get a job because I was overqualified and the industry wasn't hiring me for, I don't know, it took a while. So I'm not looking down upon people in that situation, but if I was in that situation, there's zero chance I'm going indie. I'm looking for a job, I'm trying to support myself. And then once I've supported myself, once I got a runway that I'm comfortable with mitigating my risks, then I'll go in. I do think you should work in the industry before jumping into indie. I think it's pretty important to figure out what goes on behind the scenes of making a game with other professionals, right? Make a game with other professionals. You'll make connections, you'll make friends, you'll learn things about the business, and you'll gain some experience and you'll be paid along the way. So you get paid, you can start saving your runway, you get the experience. There's no downsides to having worked in the industry before starting to go indie. Don't avoid the industry before jumping into indie dev. And if it's hard to get in, you're darn straight game dev is hard to get in. If you're gonna say it's low paying, I don't buy this as an excuse. Yes, it's low paying compared to other software engineering jobs, but it pays well enough. Like, I've never understood this argument of, oh my goodness, game developers don't make enough money. I've lived a very comfortable lifestyle as a game developer. Paid off my student loans. I did jump out of game dev, but that wasn't because of money. Um, it was because of my situation. I didn't want to leave Miami at the time. So I found a software job that allowed me to work remotely. I think you should have a project before you start diving into indie game development. You should have had a runway that's going to last you a couple projects. How do you know what you want to start working on first? You should have an idea. You don't just jump into full-time indie dev and then be like, yep, I'm going to figure it out along the way. No, mitigate your risks and then jump in. Can you sustain yourself for three to four projects? Or is it going to be just one? If it's going to be just one, how long is that gonna be? Is it gonna take you three years for a project? That's a big cost. 
I would say try making some smaller projects so you get to go through the whole release cycle or the whole project life cycle rather a couple times and then start working on a bigger project. I'm basically doing smaller projects that all work towards my bigger one. So each small project gives me some new technology or new workflow improvements or just little bits here and there that will work towards my bigger project. And I think that's really important. Just because you're working on a small project right now doesn't mean it can't help your dream project that's bigger. Make sure your resources include the ability to hire out some help where you need it. When, why, and how to hire help is something I talked about in this other video. So check that out. Well, turtles, that was this episode of Outside Game Dev where we went kayaking on a lake, talking about the full-time indie development and viability of. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, share it with others, and leave a comment below with a question for a future video. Until later, turtles, have a good one. Enjoy.